Yeah, damn it. As long as you, you stay from like over here over, the camera can see you. So I don't really want to, so you suck it up. Anyways, you right? just run and just stab myself? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? You okay? Uh, yeah, I made the, the retarded one on the right. She's a little frog. Actually, yeah. Wait, you did that one? Yeah, I think so, baby. Yeah, I made that one on the right. I thought you made the frog one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you made the frog one. So it's, you made this one now? Mm -hmm. It's actually like a give like down to the like, <laughs> 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 I thought it was finger paint since the beginning. I was like. Um, <laughs> I've always said, like, when I die, Santa's gonna be like, I got you right here, right next to me. You said Santa? You're saying it. Oh. And I told Leo, when well, you're going to hell, you know, no, Leo to me, I'm going to hell, I'll see you right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay. Y'all believe in heaven or not? You know, I was. I was Many flies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, regularly, you're the one that's been closest to seeing either one, bro. That's true. Kind of looks. Did I tell you about that time when I fucking, when I was in the, so when I was in my car, I started choking on my blood. Oh my, yo, it, it's a camera thing, oh. All right. <laughs> so look, listen, the, t the part that tripped me out the most was when, I was, I was going like in and out of consciousness, but I was definitely awake through the whole thing. Okay, for the people at home, tell them what happened. So what happened was, I was headed to school that morning, and there was a car that pulled out in front of me, and I was going kind of fast, and I swerved out of the way not to, like, rear end, rear end them, and when I did that, my little car, it was only a front wheel drive, so as soon as I, the, as soon as I hit the gravel, my car just started doing circles, and I, was, I just seen, like, the building look like it was far away for a second, and the next second, it looked like it was just boom, and then when I, when, when I seen like the building getting bigger, I just, all I could do was just cover my head. That's all I did. And after everything happened, the doctor said that's the thing that uh, protect like all my, my my brain and my vital organs like the most. So I just felt like imagine you're laying in your bed at home and somebody like if I'm on top of your chest and I put both of my hands, I just go like this. I shook the shit out. Imagine that. They didn't see your No, I'm telling you, that's what it felt like when I went through the building. When I went through the building, it just felt like somebody was just going like that. I'm shaking. And then when I woke up, when I could open my eyes, and I seen that both of the fucking walls went down, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? And that's when I seen, like, I was looking around, I seen that my, like, the whole building, like, fell on top of the car. And then, my my door, when I looked down, my door was, like, all the way inside my stomach. And, like, my arm was like that. So I was like, what the fuck? And then... After that, that's when I was just like, I was just tripping out because I thought I heard people. So I was just like, I was looking around, just like tripping out, honestly. I just felt terrible. That was like one of the first things I had. So then I just seen like some ladies running out of like this back room, which like was one of the rooms farthest from the wall that hit. But I got super lucky because this whole room was empty and they were in the other room. So when they came out, I was blessed because that lady was like a nurse. No so shit. she was a nurse, or like an off-duty nurse or whatever it was. And she was the one that was telling me, no, don't move my neck. Stop freaking out. And just try to like, you know, try to breathe. And at that point, I couldn't breathe for shit. So then like, it, everything felt like seconds. And then the fire department, the paramedics, the police, everybody got there. The police was like a whole other story in itself. And when I really got there, they were accusing me of like being drunk, being high, all types of shit. And I was like, what? <laughs> but it's because I didn't have a bottle and I didn't have a bomb in my car. But that morning I didn't do anything. I was headed to school because I usually I would smoke at school or like with my friends and shit. You feel me? Wow, man. Wow. I'm like a white mother through all that shit happened already. So, what's it called? After that, they started chopping my car apart. It was like, I just remember them stomping, like putting a blanket over my face, stomping the windshield. They ripped off the windshield. And that's when they like started getting to like the angle of my door when they started chopping the roof off. But they like chopped off the door first, and, like part of the roof, so they could get the door off. As soon as they got the door off, they they um, what's it called? Grabbed me by my shoulders, and they like 
pick me up. Like, that was a big guy. I remember big hands on my shoulders. He was picking me up. And they put a board underneath my butt. And that was the thing that they kind of, like, yeah. Like, they put me on this little fucking stretcher thing. And then they kind of, like, pulled me out at the same time. And then after that, I said, I was just, like, like, my whole body was, like, hanging off the stretcher thing. They were trying to get me into the, uh, what's it called? The ambulance. Ambulance. As fast as they could. As soon as I was in the ambulance, they still had no time to tie me down. They were just trying to get me pumped with drugs and shit to keep my heart going so I wouldn't die. And then, um, what's it called? That's when I, I, they were just telling me what they were putting into me, like, while I was, like, blacking out. And then I remember in that moment, I remember, like, everything was just getting super light in my head. Like, you know, like when you get socked in the head and you see those little stars? It was like that, but it was, like, patchy and super bright. And then I just hear them saying, oh, we're giving you how many milligrams of fucking fentanyl? They gave me like the medical fentanyl. And then I can still feel everything. I can feel all my bones like crunching and moving, my arm falling off the fucking thing. And I just, I just slowly, I couldn't feel it. I just felt super stupid. Like almost like where I had no, it's like when you go to the dentist and you know, like they numb your shit, you can still feel them doing everything inside your mouth. That was basically everything that I was feeling. And then the, the, the hospital ride, being in that fucking ambulance, felt like like seconds, you know what I'm telling you, it felt like seconds because I felt so stupid. But once I got there, it like a movie. They opened up those doors, and I'm just there like half awake, and I'm thinking Juan's in the car. Juan, but like my homie Juan Chalula, you know, because he was a paramedic. And I was talking to him like he was my homie, but it was like a white guy. And they were screaming at each other because one of them was not doing his job and the other one was. And I, that was crazy too, like when you see that when I was there. Cause my arm kept on falling off the gurney, you know, like the little thing. And he was like, hey, he's like, you use your knee? Like, imagine if we were like, you had your knee like that, but I'm laying down. He's like, use your arm to, or use your knee, yeah, to pinch it up against the body. And you know, and I'm like, I'm just there just like, like that, bro, for real. And then once they get me into the, the hospital, my mom was there. And I was like, oh, shit, what the fuck is going on? You know, cause I, I, dude, the pain was so bad, so bad that I wanted to die. I wanted to die. I remember that. I, like the pain was excruciating. It felt like everything from the inside out was hurting. So I was like, "What the fuck?" You know. And seeing my mom there, that was a whole other emotional like thing for me. Cause I was like, "Damn, she has to see me be like that." And I'm like, "You just get it over with." So then they they tied me down to the to the table. I remember that they got my legs and then my arms. I had my mom standing over me, and I was just like there, just like fighting it. I was fighting it because I didn't want them to tie me down. I didn't want them to know that he was like, he were it. And then fucking, they moved my mom out of the way. And then they get this giant needle, like this big, and another was huge. And they just shoved it straight through my fucking legs, my armpit. Right into my armpit. As soon as I did that, it was like if I could breathe. And it was like, I was like, it, was, it wasn't both of my lung capacity for sure, but just enough so where I could get those little breaths. As soon as I got those little breaths, I was like, "Do you think you're not done?" They probably did a bunch of stuff to me, but I can't remember. But they did give me a lot of drugs and a lot of shit. Um, what was it? Dilaudid. I got a lot of Dilaudid. I got a lot of uh, what was it? I can't remember if I got morphine because that was all in the beginning. They were giving me like the super strong shit. And then, fuck, bro. Yeah, I just remember the room being completely white, and then just them doing all that stuff. They couldn't really do much. Because of, uh, of my, uh, the, my ribs were broken, but the stuff that was fucked up was like my lacerated spleen, my, my punctured lung, and like all the other shit was just like minor stuff. Like I had glass and like blood all over my, like my hair for like, like a week. Mm. I still had glass in my hair. They had to give me like a bath and they were just like knocking glass off my head, like in my ears and blood inside my ear, everything. It's crazy. You didn't look externally bad. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing, because I covered my head with my arms. So my arms, they just felt so sore from smacking the metal and everything. Basically, where my chair was, was like where the middle console was supposed to be. And like my, in the passenger seat was like squished to half of what it was. So like my, my passenger seat was like all over here. Or my driver's side. I just remember my car, going back to see it, it was like in the shape of a U. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was in the shape of a U. <coughs> and then it took me a while, bro. It took me a while to recover from that. It was tough. I remember that. It was <sighs> losing. You 
know, you ever seen a two liter of, of, of soda? I, I basically had one and a half of those in a bag that they sucked out of my lung. So basically, I had a pouch of blood, like huge, but you know, it was already fucked up. So they had to, they were trying to do what they could, but they didn't want to give me like the blood transfusion if I didn't need it. So they were trying to give me like rehydrated and all sort of shit. Oh, dude. <laughs> me a while to to take a shit that was the first thing bro because all those painkillers they make you constipated mm -hmm. so i couldn't shit for like i don't remember it was like two three days i remember cesar being there for my first shit i can't remember who else was there what? and cesar was like dude fuck your shit stinks and i i couldn't even stand up at the time so like i like after like the week first week they tried to get me to like uh or it was like a week and a half and that's when i tried to have like Get up and learn how to walk again. Like that shit hurt so bad, dude. Just wow. Crazy experience. Crazy experience. Even when I got home, too. When I got home, I just wanted to see my friends, bro. I was like, bro, <laughs> my haircut was fucked up. I just wanted to cut my hair and see my homies. As soon as I got home, I was like, George, I want to get high, nigga. <laughs> I just want to get high on smoke. And then he gave me like those um, those drops. You know what those are? Those are they're called like. Uh, they're like THC drops, but they're called like T, I um, can't remember. But yeah, he gave me like four or five drops of that shit when you were supposed to take like one or two. That whole night, bro, I was fucking like screaming in my room. And my parents were just like, like they can't do nothing, you know? They couldn't do nothing. I was begging them for like painkillers, but they still couldn't do this shit. Because like, you could overdose, you know? Yeah. yeah. And my mom was like, no, nigga, you ain't getting no more painkillers. I remember the night, the day it happened, bro. I think it was a fucking trip. Yeah, for like a lot of people, they didn't know. Like a lot of my close friends didn't know for a good while. Yeah, Angel, your mom was calling Angel. And then I was, I forgot what I was doing. I was at home, I think it was like homework or some shit. Yeah. And then Angel called me and said, hey, bro. And the thing is, Angel told me that Luz sometimes just, your mom just calls. Yeah, yeah. Joking. Angel, just joking. Just joking. Hey, bro, there's an accident. Just come over. We're like, don't fucking joke about that kind of shit, you know? <laughs> no, for real. Because it's a shock type of type of moment. Yeah. Too. You know, you don't believe it. You're like, oh, you know, what the fuck? Like, but not for real. Okay. It wasn't true. And then we go, we see, we pick up with me, Charlie, and Angel. But, yeah, when we pulled up, remember we stopped for food to get for your mom and dad. So we're like, they're going to be anxious. Like, they're probably not going not gonna to leave, so we might as well get them something. Mm -hmm. Got them something, we pulled up. And like, your mom was acting the strong person, you know, like, and like, ah, still trying to be joking and stuff like that. That's but, my mom, bro, I'm telling you. already know it. But your dad, seeing your dad is what broke me, me and Angel. And my pops, bro, that was a different story. He was a soldier, man, for real. I remember I was in my room, I would get so mad, bro. Because I hear in the doctor and shit, they would be like, they're like, oh, we're going to give you this, we're going to give you that. I'm like, all right, like, just give me the shit that make me feel good, man. And then they told me they were going to give me a surgery, and another surgery to, uh, what was it? I think it was on my spoon. I remember that one. Yeah, and I think I fucking, I do feel like a jerk, I'm not going to lie. Because I had, like, my sister, my mom, my, everybody in there, and I just got irritated with the doctor. And I got so mad at the doctor, I just told the doctor to get the fuck out. Because the doctor was like, oh, I'll buy you a coffee or something like that to make up for it. I was like, bitch, what? <laughs> Like, at that time, bro, I had fucking lots of cash. Why the fuck do I want a fucking coffee, you dumb bitch? <laughs> like, <laughs> but it was just crazy to me. It was just crazy to me, bro. <clears throat> it wasn't a time for joking. Yeah, it wasn't a time for it. To me, I was like, but it, it teaches you a lot, bro, too. Because at that time, I thought I was on top of the world. Like, I was on top of the world. For real. Going to school. I was doing the stupid shit game, man. No, you're fucking reckless, bro. I'm not going to lie. Exactly. Yeah, bro, if it wasn't for that, I'd probably still be doing this stupid shit. I remember you'd call me, like, randomly, and we just go do the most random stupid mm -hmm. shit. In fact. <clears throat> we just go do, I think, a couple times, pick up or something. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I, I had been doing that since I was, like, I think, like, 17. <laughs> I was just mopping up corners by myself every, like, every, every other night, bro. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That's why I feel like I, I like all those movies because it reminds me of like this is shit that we used to do. Like, those family shit. Like, 
I would get dragged into shit and not want it to get dragged into shit. I remember George too. I forgot who else was there. <clears throat> I was like, oh, bro, we at my sister's house. And I was at my sister's house, and then she was telling me, she was like, oh, like, this is this, uh, whatever, blood, whatever it is. You know? Like, damn, we gotta go beat him up. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And then, and then I hopped in the car, and I'm like, it's mom. And we pull up to the grandma's house. And George was all there with me, and they're like, like, will you get down like this? And that was like the first time that they had seen me, you know? Like, be in a scenario where, like, you know, like, when you see me first get mad for you know how shocked you were? You remember that? What was it? When we moved the guy back into my car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you know, it's just, I was like, you, hey, don't, you, you don't see me, little. you don't see me like that all the time. So, yeah. like, those type of scenarios were, like, it's not, it's not that like you have to do it, or, I don't know how to say it. You do, a, you do what's, a, what, what's expected of you, not what you're feeling or you're thinking at that moment. You just do it, you know? And I feel like that's, that's what it is. With a lot of scenarios. Shit is wild right now. Thank God I don't have to do that. Oh, wow. It's a lot of crazy shit in me. Crazy, crazy shit. Man, I feel like I know a lot of you told me, but I feel like so I know. No, yeah, bro. There's a lot, bro. <laughs> kind of crazy shit. Crazy, crazy shit. And then people are like, like when you bring normal people around that, they don't know what to do. They only know how to joke, you know? I've noticed that too, like, fuck, bro. At that, like at that time, fuck, I don't even want to say it. <laughs> 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 we got useless and shit. You feel me? Like, that's why I was like so eager to get lesbian on the same page as me. And that's why I felt like they're heavy, bro, because if it wasn't for her, I'd probably be in jail. Or maybe dead. And that's why she's super understanding too, it's super crazy. With all the bullshit I was doing in the places I was hanging around. Like, I remember fucking, like, shit that you see in movies, bro. Like, I t- did I ever tell you about that one place we went to? It was, like, an all-black biker game. That's the, that's the first, like, that was one of the couple times, too, like, I was actually kind of worried. I'm like, dude, it's like, a, it's like a clubhouse. You walk in, you don't know what's going to happen. It's like, like, they could kill you, get rid of you, and not, you wouldn't even, they wouldn't even fucking die an eye, bro. They wouldn't even, you know? And then my sister. And she's like, oh, I got a homie. He's like, he got a little puppy, whatever. It was one of like those little micro bullies, right? And we're like, okay, yeah, tell him to come with us. And then we pull up to this fucking black biker gang spot. It was, they had like three doors you had to walk into just to get into their fucking like back little party house, whatever it was. It was two story. I remember that too. We had been chilling there, having a good time. I'm giving money to Leslie. I'm giving money to my sister. They're throwing fucking money at these strippers and shit. I'm going back and forth from the bar. I'm looking at the bar and I'm looking upstairs. And upstairs they had like curtains and shit, which like they just didn't want to see what was going on. Basically, they were had prostitution, a lot of shit going on up there, drug use, all that shit. They had all that type of stuff. And then one of the guys was hella chill with me, and he was like, "Oh, boy, are you smoke?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I smoke." And I, at that time, I was roll fucking logs, bro, fucking logs. So I go out to my car to go get my weed and some more blunts. When I'm outside. I roll two blunts and I'm like, I'm gonna smoke one outside and then I'm gonna smoke one inside. Or one outside, one inside. When I was outside, bro, biggest fucking black I've ever seen in my fucking life. Like, this shit like fucking crazy. Like, they're huge. I'm chilling with the security guard at the door. I'm smoking. I'm like, hey, bro, is it cool if I smoke? He's like, yeah, cool, it's cool. There's another dude. I don't know if it was from the same biker gang or what. He just fucked up or did some stupid shit. But they had took him into the little alley. Picked him up like he was a little kid. Put him on the wall, bro. Threw him on the floor and just, just stomping him out to the point where like he looked like he was nothing left. Like he was like a little bug on the floor. And then when that shit happened, the guy was like, the security guard was like, go inside. He's like, go inside. I go inside, nigga. Like one of the guys that was outside, he's like one of the leaders of the fucking I don't know what the fuck it was, the organization. He comes inside. He's like, who let this fucking bitch in? He's like, who let this fucking bitch in? I'm like, I'm just hearing this like yelling, right? He was talking about the dog, because the dog was on its period. It was in heat. And I guess the diaper had got like loose and there was blood on shit or on the floor. So he starts freaking out. He's like, get this fucking bitch out of here. And then my sister's drunk already. My sister, since since the time I can remember, she was an alcoholic, anger issues. Those two things do not mix. You know what I mean? Any scenario, any people you're around, it just does not mix. Smart people, chill people, people that accept shit and understand shit, they're even they're gonna be like, dude, why are you my dad? You know, like, but those type of people, they handle those type of situations. And that, my sister was like, 
was like, what the fuck? We like being the biggest tippers here tonight. Like, like what the fuck? Like we're bringing in, uh, like even the even all the strippers. They knew my sister. They fucked with my sister. They were like, if she leaves, we all leave. So all the guys in the spot were like, what the fuck? And they're all looking at me. I'm looking at them. I'm like, looking at my girl. Like, I don't know. And they're like, at that point, they're like, nah, nah, nah. You can't leave. And I'm like. You didn't just see what the fuck happened outside. I'm looking at my sister like, bro, they just killed a nigga outside, bro. Like, what are you doing? And that was insane in itself, too. They, like, they didn't want to let us leave. And my sister's like, nah, fuck that, fuck that, fuck you, nigga. Like, going off, like, you know, just being street, ghetto, just saying stupid shit coming out of their mouth. Ooh, we thank God they let us leave, bro. That shit was crazy as fuck. That guy was saying, he's like, nah, don't let them leave. Don't let them leave. I was shitting my pants on key. <laughs> I was just in my fucking pants, bro. It was the biggest fucking dude I've ever seen in my fucking life. Are you talking like built or just fat or just massive in general? And anything over 200 pounds is considered a lethal weapon, bro. Those guys were well over 200 pounds. <laughs> if they wanted to, they could have killed me like that, bro. Like Shaquille Neal? Yeah, bro. Huge. Yeah. Huge, bro. Riding bikes? Like, their bikes were huge. Like, <laughs> you don't get regular bikes for guys like that. Those are fucking huge. A lot of crazy times. What about you, Oscar? You ever go through any crazy shit? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I'm going to sit up all night standing for the cash, bro. Oh, this crazy, crazy shit. Nah, man. We all choose our own paths, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's some crazy shit, man. That's what I'm telling you. Like, after that shit happened, it makes you realize, like, the people you surround yourself with, the choices that you make, like, I knew from that point that I almost died, I knew, like, I had to change, but it's hard, bro. It's like, all those years that you built those bad habits, gotta break them. you got to break them. And that shit's hard. The people you hang out with. Like, I, that's what I'm telling you, bro, that was hard. But once I did, you see life get a lot better. A lot better. Like, I had, I'm not going to say any remotely close, but yeah, yeah, of course. in order to go through school myself, I had to sacrifice times in life. Homies that I've known for 12 plus years. Bro, I'd get lonely at school. Like, You're talking about college? College, yeah. Moving up there, like, I'd go months without seeing family and friends. Like, it's just, it's, it's a sacrifice. You're like, doing this to get to this point, and then it's back to back to normal. But for about, like, three years, I mean, I wasn't seeing anyone. Like, I was spending time with homies. Yeah, I was in FPSU for like two and a half until COVID hit. Yeah, I didn't see Oscar for a family. And it's like, I knew it was one of those things where like, I'm going to get lonely. I'm going to miss my homies. <laughs> it's like, I can't, can't fall out of that, dude. But. Yeah, yeah, I get it, but. Like, like Leo said, it's the choices you make and everything you surround yourself with. Luckily, in my, my situation worked out. I'm working a good job. I'm happy where I'm at. I'm making good money. I'm going to be stable. The career I chose is stable for the rest of my life. I have a question about your career. What's up? Do you think uh, AI will affect your career at all? Uh, y- yes and no. It already is. So there are some jobs that uh, it can take us a combined 70 hours to do, going from staff one level to senior managers. In total, it would be about 70 hours. Now they're trying to change that to 30 hours in total. And it's all AI. It's all it's all. Inputting this information is going to spit all off you perfectly fine. The thing that saves my job is there's too much human error. That makes sense? Humans code uh, systems. Yeah. And those systems can be flawed. Yeah. And that's our job to make sure those systems work. So you know, like, like you review. Yeah. That You can just say my job is just review companies' work. Audible. Someone you else has the work and just. Yeah. Make sure it's right. And if it's not, or if it's spent, there might be some sort of error. We kind of we perform it. We either you get it extremely close or exact. And if it's not what we expect it to be, we start asking questions. We start asking questions like, "Is there a way, you know, that fraud can be committed?" Because you, so you say you're, you do audits. Yeah. And basically, audits you you do that for a company to to find where the money went, right? So if money's missing, that's kind of your job to be like, "Hey, this well, money should have been here, but." How this person took it out, and that's how you... My job isn't to trace that down. My job is to make sure everything that they're presenting is fair. Like, it makes sense. 
if something is missing, it's not our problem. They have to figure it out. They can either contract us again to be like, figure this out. Or they get external help and be like, hey, we need to figure out what's actually happening here. But most, I think I saw this in one of my accounting classes. I think 80% of all, all fraud cases, the way they get solved is someone whistle blows. Mm -hmm. someone, someone confesses, someone says, this is weird. I think less than like 5% is caught by actual audits. If anything, it's less than that. Really? It's, crazy. it's it, like I said, most of it comes from people just confessing, having guilty consciousness or whatever. I think they said most frauds get caught if you just ask somebody, have you committed fraud? <laughs> because- Have you committed fraud, Oscar? I don't know. <laughs> Even if I try, I wouldn't be able to. Know. I'm not smart enough. But my job is to one day get smart enough to know how people can do it and see if I can prevent it or maybe follow a paper trail, see how it was happening. You know? But there's there's so many, I had so many career paths. I wanted to be a, I wanted to do a forensic accounting, which is pretty much I investigate only fraud or mm -hmm. cases where there might be fraud. And for that, you can work for like the FBI, IRS, police departments, government. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not being up. <laughs> I remember Ronaldo <laughs> Chavez, dude. He's like, oh, my, my cousin works for the FBI. I was like, hey, this is not <laughs> I was like, I can't even shoot no more, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Well, it's, 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 it's true because um, my homie's brother tried to be uh, a police officer. Yeah. And I guess. They research or they do background checks on your whole entire family. Yeah. So it's not even like, you know, it's a, uh, it opens the door for a lot of, you know, you might be caught for some stupid shit that you wouldn't think of otherwise. You'd be caught. Speaking of the cop situation, yeah, like, something needs to change in the fucking news. Like, this is real. Cops are fucking news. Like, uh, I, well, I, I, well, I, I think know. it's a combination of things now because of like social media too makes their job that much harder too. It's, well, I mean, it's not even bad. Like my issue is, dude, they do six months of training just to become a fucking police officer. Like they need, they need to be perfectly trained to react perfectly to any sort of situation. Unfortunately, they don't have the right to act like humans. If two people are being violent, they can't also react by with violence. The job is to de-escalate and keep people safe, right? So why are, are so many shootings being reported for cops or cops coming by accidents, people who are talking aggressive to them, right? They almost have to be trained to just be cool and have no emotions. Yeah, I, I agree. They, I they don't, I guess, they, they shouldn't have the right to make mistakes like us. We're not trained to do that. They should be trained better than six months, nine months, whatever it is. I've seen a fat cop. <laughs> I don't respect those guys. I'm there's sorry, but no, your so life's on the line, but if you're fat, and you're, <laughs> so letting, you're letting everyone down. Covered in women, that's something. I'm like, yeah. you're supposed to be, you know. If you respect your job, you would be in good shape. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That applies for many jobs. You know? well, I mean, how many jobs can you have done? You know. That's true. You, 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 uh, other people's lives are in your hands at that point. Exactly. And that's why you should be trained better than just in six months. So, do, you, do you expect a 21 year old to react correctly? To oh yeah, a violent, exactly. Like you need, in my opinion, you should almost have like a master's in either psychology or some other form of human behavior to where you understand it. You know, you gotta understand the human behavior. And that's that's what it is. And I was talking to, so, a coach on the side, and one of the kids, co uh, the kid's dad is a. Uh, was a sergeant for someone high up in a police, I don't know the whole position. He even told me like, half of the kids that come into the academy and wanna be, they're just pumped from high school, think they're, they're strong, we think they're the shit, we think we've peaked. And like in reality, dude, like, if I they get sent out to something and someone reacts violently, they're gonna react violently because I'm the shit. No one can talk down to me, I have authority. It's like, these punks can't, like they're worse than the criminals that we try to stop. Cause like now they're, the same mentality, they just have authority. Or actually, they think they have authority. Yeah. And it's, it's not fair. They abuse, they abuse law. They abuse a lot. They abuse law. It's like he's tired of young guys thinking that it's all fun and games. Because when it's not, it's like that's when they panic and they just mess up. And that's what these props for that route. And this is coming from someone who's a Marine for a long time, who's been 
through the ups and downs, start at the bottom, work your way to the top. Like he says, like the most important thing of being an officer, understanding that everyone's a human. Do you think, and being understaffed too, kind of like a... Understaffed? Yeah. Because I remember back in the day, like the old cliche way, like when you watch movies and shit, you would always see them having a partner. Now you don't ever see them being, having a partner. They always have to call for backup, you know? So you think that contributes to like the anxiety too, all the time, like when you pull up on being one alone. Friend, yeah, being alone, mm-hmm. like under, like... Yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. understand, just outnumbered. I don't know, I'm not outward, you know, much about the, what that's looking like, the numbers, but I just think anybody can, in my opinion. I think a lot of lives can be saved. I feel like a part of it is that we also, um, you know how you can say villainize, you can villainize people? Yeah, that's true. I feel like we, we do the opposite. We make them heroes when they're not, they're, they're just regular people. And then them being called heroes all the time, like, oh my god, you know, like, but I'm older, one just like you, and deep down they're a piece of shit. So it's like, I think they should be, it sounds, it sounds fucked up, but cops should almost be less respected, almost out of necessity. You know, it's not a job. That's just the first, that's exactly what causes them to abuse their authority. Then. Plus, plus, why? If, I feel like a lot of people like being a cop because they get this, this respect, yeah. right? And then if, if the respect is gone, I feel like less less of the bad people, the, the bad cops, you want to be cops. And then maybe you would get more more um, honest people. Yeah. Like I feel like if you're if you're really if your intentions are in the right place, you shouldn't want any credit for yeah. anything you do. And I think that's that's you know See like think about the culture of like firefighters and police officers. No one no one's ever wrote a song about saying fuck firefighters. Yeah, sure. <laughs> because they literally just yeah, do their job. Yeah. Serve and protect. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure, there there has to be a couple of bad ones that have happened, but... I mean, I never heard of saying bad firefighters. No, I've heard of dirty cops. I've never heard of the dirty firefighters. At some point, they're or lazy. Like, lazy firefighters. Yeah. There's like another thing, too. Like, well, not even lazy. Like, when you sign up for that, you have to, like, know that you're running into, like, danger. Yeah. Yeah, and then... So the, yeah, they're, they're the crazy ones. They 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 run towards every, what everyone runs away from. That, I think that, that's, that's how cops should be too. Yeah, I agree. Like that other video that we seen the other day when it was like a school shooting, and they had a guy. Oh, stop. He, the, yeah, he he didn't even have a gun a gun on his hip, I think. No, and he, he looked like he was just like yeah, and he looked machine. like he was just telling the rest of the cops to stop and wait. Like, what was that guy even doing there? No matter what position he was, he's a fucking bond. <laughs> yeah. Like. There's kids in a room getting massacred, and you're telling people to wait. There's only one shooter and 30, 30 of you guys in a fucking hall. I think uh, from the video, like that guy wasn't a cop. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he. I think what happened to his benefit. And I'm not necessarily trying to defend him. I'm just analyzing what I saw. Right. We're just talking about that recent one that just happened too. Yeah, yeah, no, just talking. About. So what I think happened is just all the adrenaline. He's not trained for it, and that's just. How he, he just wants to keep people safe. He, he wanted to keep people safe, but you know when, when you don't, he doesn't shit out there. Probably. You know it's uh how to rea- how to compose yourself in those kind of situations. He has no training for that. Yeah, it looked like right. So so in a way, I can't blame him. He probably was just scared. He didn't want else to die. But in another way, those guys should have known better. They should have just told that guy get the fuck out. If it was a civilian in the way, he would have given him the out of the way. You know, but for a reason. Cops, so well, remember the shooting? I think it was last year where someone shot up like a elementary school, mm-hmm. and the police officer like, just stood outside the school for like. No, in Texas. In yeah, Boston. Texas, bro. Yeah, that yeah. that one actually broke my heart. That's like the like it's fucked up to say that all of them haven't broken my heart, but this one the most because they were little kids, dude. And the fact that it could have been pre- like a couple lives could have been saved, and that that one is like that's what pisses me off about. Cops, it's like they're not trained enough to, like I said, they almost have to be robots. That's what I'm saying. They, they have to take all the emotion out. Yeah, exactly. You know? I, I feel like I see a lot of cops is the, they have a lot of ceremonies. You know, they're always giving like the keys to, see. they have all yeah. this shit that like, I feel like it's a detriment to your mentality in the long run. I really think, yeah. Not, not to get it nerdy, but you know, you've seen Naruto. Of course. You know how Itachi, Ichi, 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 Ichi
No, I don't watch that one. So basically, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the new, I'll say this real quick. The new age anime is fucking whack. You watch anime like, <laughs> He's like, like, like Hero Academia, all that other bullshit. Nah. You fucking whack. No, nah, no, that's but the old anime was dope. But yeah, so basically, <laughs> but basically, um, there was this guy, right? There was this. Um, he had this mission. He basically had to kill his entire family, and then he's gonna be branded as an outlaw. Spoilers, by the way. But he's gonna be branded as an outlaw, and he kind of like accepted the role, like. Like he's doing his job for his, his village, and then that role would have included him being basically a criminal and being exiled, and everyone's gonna hate him. And I think that's dope because I think that's how most people should be. It's, you shouldn't it's like want yourself. you shouldn't want the credit. You should do the task at hand because you know you have to do the task. Uh, at that's hand. Yeah. So I wish more people had yeah, people, that. People who crave that. People want the valid, uh, validation that what they're doing, which is fine, right? It's, I mean, we're all human. Y'all want to be told good job here and there, but. But I think some some will show, some will show, show. Yeah, exactly. You can't take that. It's your job. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever heard. Remember during the the riots that happened in Portland? It wasn't just riots in Portland. I think it was riots like all over the world. Mm-hmm. And a part of one of the riots was in France. Just fucking firefighters were lighting themselves on fire with the fire suits in order to discharge police officers. Really? That's insane. They're fucking insane. Like those are the motherfuckers that are doing their job and doing it for their brother. Like, my opinion for the right reason. <laughs> I remember the first time I went to one of those riots. That was insane. Bro. Portland? Yeah. I was with um Mar? No, I was with it was me, Junior, uh Mika and her little sister I think. We, we went to go have Buffalo in Portland and we were just us chilling. And, and, and we were telling her to pull up here, she pulls up, we pull up and we're like parking in this parking garage. We're walking down and then we was uh, when we got to the bottom of the stairs there was two, like three, actually it might have been like three guys, and they're all wearing like leather, all wearing leather. And when they just walked past us, so we only got to see the backside, all Caucasians, the white dudes. And, right? I'm like, hey, nice leather jacket. He looks back at me like, like that. And I'm like, all right, my bad. <laughs> and then and me, I, I tell Junior, I'm like, what's going on over there? And I see down the street, there was like this guy attacking this girl. And we're like, what the fuck is going on? And that 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 was crazy to me. Like seeing that shit happen, like nobody was there to do anything. And I'm like, even us too, like what happens if we get in and we get involved with all those guys and they come over and we don't even know what's gonna happen. We get to the riots, on one side they just had straight police, bro, and on the other side, you could feel it in the air. It was like a it was different. Tense? Yeah. It was like the air could have like caught on fire and you lit a match or something like <laughs> everything there bro like you know if any sudden movement w- was to change in that in that whole equation the outcome would have been completely different like I remember this lady looking at Junior like his Junior was grabbing me pulling me pulling me he's like oh let's see look at me cause he was scared and I was like bro you, you're here and like Junior kept on saying like bro he's like I, he was like let's go and I told him like bro I just want I just want to see those words I couldn't have chose the worst words. I just want to see, like, yeah. when people are here living and dying for what they're like believing in, and, you just want to and I just want to see. This lady looked at me, bro. She looked at me dead in my face. I thought she was gonna hurt me, bro. She's like, "You think this is a sporting event? You think this is like starts going off on me?" You know, it's 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 funny because in the moment, I'm sure her feelings were validated. But if, if time travel was real. You're telling me people wouldn't go back to those kind of events just, just, just see. No, I wouldn't. No, I was, I was literally scared, bro. I was scared because those guys had their guns. If there's Black Panthers. There's racists. Those are the extremists. Those are like the people that believe and will die for. Die what, for they will die for what they believe in. And just being around those people, I was like, yo, I don't have no way to protect myself. Even if I did, there's no way I have a chance to fight against these people. Like, that's like a. That's like a bloodline of pain. Like their parents suffer. Their parents' parents suffer. So they're gonna make the next person feel that same pain. Like they were ready to unleash that on the next person. And that was crazy to see. That that was, that was something I understood too when I was seeing that. The other side of that was I remember I was in class when this all this was happening. And the teacher decided to be like, you know, fuck it. Mm-hmm. Like this, the last 30 minutes of class is talk about what's happening. I just wanna see everyone's perspective. I don't know if you know this. Accounting, it's 95 99% just white people. Mm-hmm. It's like, fuck, dude. 
<laughs> you know, there's literally a uh, Chinese lady who she was an exchange student or she immigrated, something like that. But the point is, she lived in China for mm-hmm. most of her life. And me, the only other color, person of color in the class. And she speak, and unfortunately, the teachers like picks us out because obviously we're the only yeah, the minorities. The but minorities, he wants to see. But he wants to see. And, he's, and she's like, what she said was like, incredible to me. She said, like, I'm more impressed that you guys can actually protest. If you go back, go back in time with China, we were going to protest of students, and I forgot what, what capital it was. Mm-hmm. But she said for a whole week they were just trying to, you know, argue the right thing. The next day they converted every single student that was doing a protest. So like, I'm just more impressed that they're not dead yet. Yeah. And I'm like, it, it's pr- it's a, it it's is all pretty, perspective, bro. It's all perspective. It's all perspective. You, she's like, you, you swap shoes actually, with somebody, stand somewhere different, and you yeah. really get to see. And she's like, I'm more impressed that you guys actually get a voice and actually get to do something about it. She's like, back in my country, we did this. Like, it's getting shut down. Like, yeah. What about your country, bro? And then, then they asked me about it. And then my question to everyone in the class was, because everyone else was like, oh, violence isn't right. Violence isn't the right thing. They're just doing it for attention. And I'm like, I'm like, let me ask you guys something. I'm like, why didn't you guys care last year when there were peaceful protests? Like, why didn't you guys, why didn't you guys talk about it then? And then everyone just mute. Yeah. I'm like, why do you guys care now that there's violence? I'm like, because it's not the right thing. I'm like, so ignoring them the last couple of years where it's been peaceful is the right thing to do? I'm like, how about you help realize that there is an issue, like support them, make them feel like they're not alone, because this is what it leads to. Mm-hmm. This is why we have people like, <clears throat> my personal opinion, the, the greatest person of the the, the Blacks uh, Lives Matter, the original movement when Martin Luther King was Malcolm X, he literally died for the cause. He was the one, the first one who said, if there is no action, there will be violence. And if you just continue to oppress us, like there will be violence. There comes a point where everyone says, someone says enough, and fights back. I think it's, uh, it's, it's easy, I don't mean to generalize white people, but it's easy for them to say, like, oh, why do they gotta be violent? Yeah, exactly. And they never had, I mean, maybe they did, you yeah. know? But for the most part, like, like, how else are you gonna find movement? How else are you gonna make a change it? Unless, you know, I'm sure there's people doing all of the, the right way to do it, right? But then nothing happened, nothing happened. It's the boss right there. It's the boss. Oh, shit. So, yeah, it's a, what can you do? It's like, it's all perspective. Yeah. Like I said to them, like, no, it, this no, is the most no, minor no, thing no, no. that shows race is, but I've gone to the store with like Junior, Leo, Angel, and we've had employees follow us around. Like just, you know, they're hood rats. Like, they do their shit, so they kind of know. Yeah. But I asked them, how many times do you walk into a group of your white friends and do they just follow you around? And someone's like, um, oh, it just, it's, it's, just, it's, it's different. And, and, but at the same time, just how we're saying it is perspective. It is all perspective. That's, that's, that's their perspective. We have to, you know, we understand their perspective. Like, they don't, you just don't get it. Yeah. So it all comes back around. I think it's important. Yeah. I just, I think I'm the uh, way I always do. I don't like judging people. <laughs> you like what? I don't like judging people at all. But if you act a certain way, I'm gonna do it. There was this, there was this, um, this little cutaway from Family Guy, where it was like, there's nothing you can take oh, if I believe in God, I'll go to heaven. Or I forgot what it was. It was like, like the, the guy and the snake and the tree. It's like, oh, this guy's gonna die because I, I believe in my God. And it's kind of like, like, any of them could have been right. Yeah. So it's like, you never really even know. So it's hard to have a. That's always a challenge to live with I don't know. Yeah. I, religion, religion is different for you. Than the natural belief. I think it's, it's two things. That, that's fair. I have like, run out of in my I I don't want to follow the same organized. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust human activity because of, I mean, how are we talking about cops? Cops have power. The church. Power. The more. church, that was reading this book, yeah, 40 Thousand Power. power. Push it up. The Pope used to go to war with people. Yeah. That was like an army back then. Yeah, so, it was. So now it's it's peaceful, but I'm sure that less of power is still in there. So, yeah. some religion. What turned what turn me away was the Pope, bro. I'm Catholic, was. I don't know. But, um, 
you're, you're curious. <laughs> no, I'm not curious. <laughs> uh, there was a, a father in, a, in our hometown uh, who was accused, well, was accused, actually guilty of it. And it turns out he was one of the, that was um, giving classes to my sister. Mm -hmm. And that's when like, we had this monster. Don't like teach my sister. I'm like in these churches sometimes. Oh, here, my issue was is they kind of, in my opinion, the people are brainwashed saying people who are close to the church are the most tempted by, by the devil. And I'm like, that's that's bullshit. Like if you're a bad person, just say you're a bad person. Like I don't <laughs> flat out. Bro. It was flat out. Like I, the way I explained it to my mom was like, if I were to become a priest right now, I promise to God I would never ever harm a child or touch a child. Because I'm not a fucking Ooh, person. Cool. If someone would want to do that, they're just a shitty person. Sure, it can <laughs> circumstance and being tempted and all that, but it doesn't take away from the fact, you know? Nope. And I'm tired of the making <laughs> excuses. Didn't come out. Being like, oh, it's because, no, it's because of a shitty person. Just admit it. I think the problem is that, I'll push it back in, but it's what the job requires, right? It's a guy to be single, <laughs> And then basically, like, get no hoes, right? <laughs> and then, like, they grow up to be lonely and weird, and then, oh, I'll just be a priest, you know? And then, like, yeah, I get all this. Yeah, I don't know, I'm scared. I hate that there's both no excuses. There's always gonna be, uh, I don't know, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's sad that, that it's so rampant. That's the worst part. Yeah. If it was, like, 10%. Less than 10. And I would have been a little more. 10% like, is pretty fucking high. No, no, no. But, like, what do you think it is now? I'm, I, there's no way it's not more than like 40 to 50%. Well, that's pretty high. I think. Realistically speaking. 40 to 50%, that is an insane number to say. I, I would say even 10% is a high number. It is a high number. But, but I, the way I view it is the majority of people are like that. Are you talking about people in general or church? The church. I feel like a lot of the priests are. You know, I feel there's more, more of them than, than not. And that's, I think, that's what's more concerning to me, that it's not even a small portion of it, it's, I feel like it's a majority. Yeah. Uh, that, that opens up a whole different can of worms, a whole lake. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> really, man, I don't know the answers, but... If the only answer, if I could ask one question and have it answered, is God. Right? That's the only one I want to know. But what would, so if the answer was yes, and would you be content and then not have a single answer after that? Or a single question after that? Honestly, it would explain a lot. What do you mean? Because everyone always says God has a plan, right? <coughs> it's all part of God's plan, apparently. So if he's real, then he's real and he has a plan. If it's not, then we're living off this false hope for no reason. What do you mean for no reason? Like, people always be saying, like, well, if God intended it this way, when bad shit happens. If, if God... God himself, herself, it's just kidding. It's uh, no, it's it's a him. <laughs> um, if God was real and we knew it, I feel like people would act differently. They would act. Uh, uh, you ever seen Futurama? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not really. No, there was just an episode where the robot ended up being God. God, right? Like, uh, he ended up be, like floating in space. He was lost in space, which is him. And like a meteor hit him, like a small one. And there's like little, little people that were in it. And then like, they basically made him the, the, the God of them, right? Like they wanted to worship him because he was all, like, all powerful. And um, basically, like Bender the robot tried to help them out. And then he ended up killing some of them, right? On accident, you know? And then he ended up ignoring them, thinking that, um, like that, that would be a better solution to it. And then there ended up being a portion of the population that wanted to revolt against him because he wouldn't help him. So then they ended up all dying anyway, but then he ended up being the real God, which was like a, a universe, like a bunch of clouds and airy fairy shit. But basically the God, the real God was telling them, they're like, like when you do something for them, they become dependent on you. So then they become very lazy. They become like, oh, just, you know, like, why go out and hunt for my food when I can just uh, pay for God to do it for me? Versus, um, when, you, uh, when they think they're not real, 
Like they, oh, yeah. they had to be fighting and shit like that, right? So it's it's um watching the episode made me like put myself in the place of God, which is kind of fucked up to say. I get what you're saying. But but I think it's important if you're trying to figure yourself out, or at least religiously, um, like if you were God, you kind of have to think about it. If if, if you were all powerful, people would be constantly. It's like a vending machine. You would just, you know, every single day just be asking for shit. So you kind of have to, I think, do both. You have to, um... I would just find more people. I think to believe in the idea of God is more important than, than that. That's because, because if God was not real, if the idea of God was not a thing, what, why would anyone want to live this long? Why would people want to live even the past 20 years old? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, that's how people define out themselves. Everyone needs to find a reason or purpose. And my my crazy conspiracy is they created they might have created God just to give people that reason. I mean, yeah, and then you might be right, but but you ever heard of the placebo effect? The question. Is, I think it's even last week. No, I'm just saying. No, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and I think it's the same thing. Like, like people believe. Let's say, let's say this: God is not real. Mm-hmm. So if people believe in the idea of God, in the idea that we shouldn't be pieces of shit to each other, that we should be like loving and caring to all people, that idea in itself, I think, is way more valuable than if God was actually real. That, that makes sense. Like, I get what you're saying. You know, that I would mean, cause a lot of car- carnage. Yeah. If you just, if I, I think if if I had that one and I had an answer, I wouldn't say. It. I wouldn't even say. It. I would just make some bullshit up. And just tell them because I, I just want it for myself. Yeah, I want to validate people. Just, I mean, I don't have kids, right? But, but um, we are essentially kids to that kind of level of thinking. If your kids ask you, oh, like, like is God real or not? And then even if you don't believe in it, you might tell them, oh, of course he's real. Because like, getting into the nuance of it, you might not get it, and you might be even more confused. And I think, even though we're old, we're grown, like we're still, you know. We're not that one. Not but the, uh, the placebo effect thing, I think you you could literally think yourself out of cancer. You like, think it's possible? It's it's done before. It's been done. It's been done. Like people go to the hospital and the doctor tells them, oh, you have these new days to live. And so people it's not I think there's a difference between belief and conviction. You know what I mean? And the people who because I've read stories that people were so convinced that they don't have it, that the doctors were wrong, that they kind of manifest it into reality. So I think the part really you asked about heaven being real, I believe if I were to die, no matter how little or how much I attended church, as long as I, it's almost like a cheat code in a way, because like, I know if, if, if I kept myself, if I can convince myself to believe that it's real, in a way it is real. I get what you're you know what I mean? So it's it's, and then you can apply that to anything else, uh, as far as like goals and striving for a better life. Like as long as you believe it's real, it kind of technically is. I, I get what you're saying there, and this is where this is one of the reasons why I chose my um, what you? my career is because for me, by the way, my brain works is one plus two equals three. Like there's always a sequence oh. to things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's always this. You do this, it gets you this, and it gets you to that. Yeah. You know. So my person really struggle with what's called abstract thinking, which is like these bigger concepts. Because I'm always torn between is it yes or is it no, and I struggle with finding that middle ground because it's it's I've tweeted it out before. Um, uh, what's that guy that made the big the big Gatsby? Fitzgerald, no, Fitzgerald, Scott Fitzgerald. Um, he has a quote that uh, first, or like high high levels of intelli- intelligence is being able to agree with two of the opposing ideas okay. and retain the ability to function. And I think that's what a lot of life is. Is, is yes and yeah, you know, and that's. Um, I mean, I feel like I can see it. Or I, I wish I could explain it in a way where it was just, you know, one plus one is, is two. Yeah. But in a way, it kind of is. Like, I'm telling you, if you believe in yourself, that's one. 
if you believe, sorry, sorry, if you believe in a concept, that's one, and you, um, and you kind of uh, delude yourself into believing that it's real, that's two, then it equals three, that. But whatever thing you think of it is it. I, I, I get that. Like, I do, I do truly, I understand the concept, it's just for me, I just have this internal struggle. It's a, it's a delusion. It's an illusion, but it's, 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 uh, now I don't want to say necessary, but it's, it's beneficial to you. Whether God is real or right at the end of our lives, if we live our lives so believing, believing in a higher power and thus ended up being better people throughout our lives, like, it was a net positive that, that we, yeah. even though we might have been wrong at the end of our lives, you know, it would have been best for everyone. The way I see it too, if you're a good person, you're going to be a good person regardless. You don't need to do it for somebody. No, of course. But, no, but I think, um, I think um, in order to be a good person, you have to you have to want to be a good person. You know, I feel like if you don't have God in your life, and I'm not super religious, right? But if you don't have God in your life, I think it's hard to want to be a good person. I don't think, I don't sort of think that's true. I think, like, I guess there's a difference between being introduced to him and... I grew up Catholic, but I haven't been to church since I was like 15. And I'm not interested in knowing, like I said, I, one thing I am curious about is how many people who go to college end up either renouncing religion or renouncing their belief in God. Because there's one thing I know, I feel like having these other ideas such as science introduced, where this, these concepts of, like I said, one plus two equals three, like science can almost explain everything perfectly. There are some things it can't. But I want to know how many people end up changing their mind after being introduced. I think I think a high amount of people. I, I, I think, think so. I think um, it's almost necessary. You know what I mean? I think uh, like when you're trying to get good at something, when you got good at soccer, I'm sure there was you would lose games. You know, you would of course. you would um, you would go through some hardships, and I think part of figuring out who you are spiritually is part. It's, it's going through that atheist phase. Yeah. Because I used to not believe in it, but then... What made you change? Honestly? Honestly, I, I always I always felt better believing, believing that he was real. But, that makes sense. Um, but I can never explain it. I think uh, these last couple of years I've really been trying to work on my like, mental health. I know that's not cliche as hell. No, it's not. It's uh, normal. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. I, I, don't, I, I say it sounds cliche because I don't mean that how other people would mean that. Order in this court. Order <laughs> in this court, man. Who left this door open? We got the heat coming out of the heat. He's like, he's crazy. <laughs> Come on. We have the one to walk out of bro. <laughs> say that shit again, man. <laughs> bro, I'm a slut for me. <laughs> Whoa. We have to, to blurt that out. Yeah, out of everything you said. I know. <laughs> That's the one thing. We're gonna say. Oh, speaking uh, of those kind of things, like, you know how hard it was changing my vocabulary once I got to college, bro. I still like I still use the word "mean." <laughs> no, I, I remember. I remember h- hanging out with Oscar and him like being like, "Chill," like because you like you know we would be saying that like regular, because life ain't never changed for us, you know. But with Oscar over there hanging around with all these sophisticated ass people and like sensitive people you could say you know from our point of view you know what i mean we'd be, we'd be like oh you know if, uh, if i think it's just reading the room right but it's, people don't know how to do that yeah. <laughs> That's well, I mean, i'm saying oscar does because he's he's trying to censor himself yeah. yeah i'm not saying everyone does but. Dude, there's so many words i had to cut out of my vocabulary i had to cut out the f word you can say it a lot of words i don't say the n word at all <laughs> I used, I used to be like top three favorite words for you, but I'm not gonna lie, dude. You know what? It's, it's funny. I feel like this is a crazy perspective or a crazy take. If if there was only guys in the world, I feel like no one would care if you were just because you know when you're on your, your boys, you know you're just saying shit to say shit. Right? I don't think it's that's not true. It's I was not, telling my girl right now, I'm like, can you guys just want to kick it with the boys? <laughs> and she's like, just go. It's um, because when you're around like you know girls and and maybe even people who who aren't your close friends, you act less degenerate. You know what I mean? Because because you know what I'm saying. So I feel like if everyone if everyone was our homies, the entire population oh, of the world was was this friend group. Like 
You can say whatever you want. You can say, no one making up new words just because, you just, know. The, the way I see it, like, I grew up to the point where words don't affect me. I've been called every single word in the book. Like what? I feel the same way too. Like, you can, like, I, I think it all comes back around, you know? Like, yeah. all the people that used to call me those things, now they hit me up. Like, I'm like, kind I of, I think it's kind of weird. You know, I have friends that used to call me Beaner this, Beaner that, Wetback Wait, this, Wetback that. Friends. Like, one, like, let's say white people. Let's yeah, say yeah. Uh, whitewashed Mexicans. Like, even Mexicans that thought they weren't even Mexican. Like, I don't know, there's a bunch of people like that. It's, it's, it's confusing. That's yeah, why it's strange. Confusing. It is strange. You know? And then they come back around and they're like congratulating you and then they're doing this, this, and that. Like, I don't know, it's kind of weird though. I agree. I think it's weird. But like, you get what I'm saying? Like, no one, I, I want to say, but if I were to call you the most incredibly outrageous racial slur, you wouldn't give a shit. Right? I can tell the same thing. You just because we grew up with being, like I said, I've been called everything. Like, when, when you grew up with the people in our neighborhood, like, we call it the hood rats for a reason, you know? Yeah. People got cooked out of our neighborhood just doing too much hood rat shit. I think I kind of like that, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, I would like pulling up to the places that they least expected me at, you know? Like, the, let's say, like, the way we grew up, yeah. like, we were like the soccer kids, but like the, the funny group, you know? Yeah. Like, the loud kids. Like, we were those kids. But, but, that kids but, <laughs> but you know, we were happy. Yeah. We were happy. All the other kids were like, they weren't like that. You they know? were trying to fit in. Yeah. And we knew what we were. And and that's the thing, you know. Uh, they were trying to fit in. And I, I, I realized that, that too about a lot of the like the popular girls. Yeah. Uh, you know, and not, until, not, not, not until, yeah, even the guys. Like, it was not until it was cool to kick it with us. Not until we were like state champs. Not until we were the yeah. funny guys in school. Not until that. Like, that's when they wanted to be friends with us. And I thought that was funny. Like, like yeah. you guys are fake. You guys are weird. Like, in reality, it's just like, you know, what's funny. I, I can kind of relate to that with uh, with the group chat that happened. Uh, so these guys have a group chat, and when I first found about it, I found out about it. That's when we first started kicking it. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, "Who's my invite?" Right? <laughs> yeah, we're not. But then, like, for now, that when I actually did get invited, it's like I kind of didn't need it in a way, you know? Like, right? Because once you already know what it is, like, yeah, like I wasn't like, tripping about it. It takes the fucking cat out the hat. Like, so it's not as surprising. It's a big group chat. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, what, no but I'll say this about you guys' group. It's dope because cause I have friends in high school. I have friends I grew up with, with since I was young. But it's not like your guys' group. Like, you guys' group of guys. Of course. It's, like, it's probably never going to break up. Yeah, that's what it's I was always going to be. That's what's dope about, I honestly, I think I said it was an honor when I, you guys sent me into the group chat. And actually, I meant it. I see longevity in that group, whereas like, yeah, other true. groups, you know, you want to be talking for a month or two, and then it's done so far. I feel like that group, you know, we're all going to meet each other's weddings, we're all going to meet each yeah, other's exactly. kids' first birthday. Except you know. like today, yeah, I've talked about it so much, I've told my mom, like, I've known most of these guys for like, half my life at this point. Yeah, it's funny, because I, I met you when we were little, like, we were like 14, 13, so. and, but, like, Growing up in high school, I wasn't the most popular. I was pretty quiet in my no. opinion. I was extremely quiet. You said, fuck you, you're an asshole. You know what I'll never forget? Remember when, uh, when I joined uh, our student body government and everyone was just saying, like, hi, my name is, and this is my role? Mm -hmm. Remember, I, I, I ended up, because I wanted to get scholarships. So I wanted to get involved. I wanted to be that everything paid for kind of student. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up joining it. Honestly, I fucking hated every single one of that. Everyone's acting so stuck up. I remember the first day I was there. Um, one of the first in the comments is we're sick of the soccer boys and I'm like I'm gonna be captain of the fucking team <laughs> <laughs> right? like we're not doing this for fucking you guys we're doing it for ourselves mm -hmm. we're, we're not doing it for the school we're not doing it for attention we're, like you guys we could have no fans and we still wouldn't care yeah. we're doing it for each other and I remember after that I'm like I fucking hate every single one like, and then we have that assembly and everyone's being introduced and that's what I'm saying. And, like, then, and it gets to my turn. I get to Mike and I'm like, no, my name's Oscar. All awkward as shit as I am. And I, I think someone from the soccer group screamed. And then the entire school just started like. What? But for everyone else, like, no one's like. Like, no one cares. No yeah. One cares. It's because people had, Oscar had people backing him the whole way too. Yeah. The nerds, the teachers, yeah. his homeboys. <laughs> they had everybody. But, then, but like, like those other people, you know, like, they're just there doing everything by script. Like. You know, like, you know what's funny? 
Um, I can kind of relate to that. In high school, they they call me a steak. That that that, <laughs> that, that was a steak. No, in my head, <laughs> what happened was. Uh, I would start calling people snakes. So then, like, because I would call out people snakes, they, like, they started calling me a snake, right? Yeah. And it was funny because how, how you were saying, like, like, the popular kids, like, you know, you got that. Tell me why when you call up my name, like, half my class hissed as I was walking up to <laughs> them, like, my diploma. And that was like... That shit was like, you were, you were known. Like, that's what I'm saying. And, like, and it, was, it wasn't just, like, a certain group of people. It was, like, most... It was, like, a lot of different, like, uh... Backgrounds, yeah. I went to your graduation, not for you though. What? He's like, not for you. I'm gonna tell you the story. You never told me the story. Who's your cousin? Oh, my god, this is like the sixth, seventh time I've explained this. Who's your cousin? Diana. You met us? Yes. Bro, this is the exact same reaction every fucking time, too. Hold on, man. The kids, that's why you don't do drugs, man. Jesus Christ. Honestly, I was a straight edge. Back in high school, I didn't do anything I until uh, I was 18. I believe it, yeah. I think I was like a freshman when I started smoking. I was straight edge. You still hey, I still am, <laughs> but like, I deviated once I turned 21. You waited, you really waited until 21? It was just tiny. Like, I just had to wild out when I was 21. But, so, would you drink before that, like, here and there? Or? I would, like, I can count the amount of times I got drunk before I was 21. So you weren't you weren't ever like I wasn't a preppy either. No, yeah, yeah. You were you were like, and that's just not me. Yeah, it's just not me. Versus versus um like you're just super anti of that. Like that only became your personality. No, I never I was never anti yeah, that. I, I that. Like I never hated when my friends would smoke. I don't like it myself. I'm only saying that because I was low key like that. I was like, you were, oh, smoke me. I can't do that shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I remember at first I was upset with them, I'm like, yeah. You know, it's whatever. You know, they're, they're, they're my homies. Yeah, because that's how it was too. Like, more, like, the older I got, more and more of the homies would do it. And I was like, whatever, you know. Well, they graduated from that bullshit now. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just going to stay in bed with Man, I, I wish they would have stayed on this movie, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I feel like it's. And the weather changed, you know. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> Why are you guys looking at me? <laughs> I feel like it's funny in high school. Um, you the people who are are at their peak in high school, I feel like are always the ones that fucking decline as fast as fuck. Yeah, maybe man, it's, it's the way the book is written. I see that too. It's. Yeah, I think I only know one guy that was from my high school that ended up not being a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly, got my cousin in that too. Oh my she got a four right there. Hey, shout out to her. Shout out to her. She's technically my tia. She's a fed? What? She's a fed? She worked for the FBI too? Nah, man. He said, nah, bro. He said, I already said too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny too because there's people uh, looking back at it. There's people in high school who I he thought it was everything. There's people in high school who like I wouldn't want to fuck with today, but all all I know is them back in high school. But then the thing about me, like I wasn't really much of anyone back in high school. So if anyone had any negative feelings about me, so because he knew me in high school, I'm like, well, that's like no, that's not even who I am, you know. So so yeah. maybe, maybe they're cool now. You know? But no, yeah, it, that is true. Exactly what you're saying. I ran into people too that have that same perspective and that same outlook. Even later on, like certain people that, what is it? Fuck, I hate to say names. I don't even want to say names, but we we went over this before too. You know who I'm talking about too. They uh, they were talking shit about me, all my friends, and what I was what I was driving that day. I remember he he pretended. I don't know. It was weird. Like you, you know what I mean? You could even you could even like show anybody that hospitality and you know, be respectful to them, and then but they if they are stuck on that outlook about who you are, you can't change that. You know, yeah. you know and that, that's crazy to me. Well, it's funny. Of, it's funny because uh, like from our perspective, it's like that's fucked up. But then like you don't know someone like uh, poopy pants. Oh yeah, you know, like that name stuck for him forever. Yeah, shit, yeah, right? yeah. So I mean, maybe that's the same way some people are too. Poopy, poopy. <laughs> some guy that fucking 
<laughs> yeah, it's something that had to do with parents. So like, so like, like I would bring that up because like, like what if, you know, names stick. So like, what if like oh Leo used to do this, and then like that's all they knew. So, so for yeah. them like every time they thought about you, they thought about that. Yeah. So it's like one and the same. I was an ass. I'm not gonna lie. No, you weren't. No, well, I remember, dude, because I like to me personally when I thought about myself, I thought about I thought I was an asshole sometimes. Because, dude, I would laugh at the dumbest shit. Remember when we in the cafeteria? I table? remember the bullshit. Dude, I, dude, they were assholes, too. Because they would make me do it. Like, And not that I'd not make me do it, but just, like, my reaction, I had no control over at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, it would be, like, the simplest shit, like, like the special ed class walking by. You know? Oh, and and we were, I wouldn't even want to laugh. Well, I guess. But everybody would look at me, and I would yeah, get yeah. so nervous, I would start <laughs> laughing. And I was like, bro, why are you guys doing that to me? I think that's just... It's it's not a great thing, but I think that's just the side effect of being with the boys. Yeah, everything you know? is gonna be fun. Like everything, everything is, should nothing's happen. off limits. Yeah, yeah. nothing's off yeah. limits. You know, and that's just shit. That's like, well, especially if you're hanging out with people like Rooney. I never went to school with Rooney. I never. Yeah, Rooney was young. Oh, I don't mind. I know for uh, one thing I do say is there are some people I wish would go back to their high school personality. Like some people have changed up way too much for the negative, in my opinion. Like I've heard of, yeah, that's like. True. Like homies that you would like in fact what I would say were, were close to me have a lot of classes with them and hang out outside of school and then now they act like they don't know anybody you know like that's the kind of bullshit I'm like what happened you know what made you so like ah uh, fuck everybody you know like, yeah, well, like watch this war bro you, that's you know? completely fucked up story no yeah that's what I'm saying like some people maybe went through some fucked up shit that no one knows about that that's fair they don't know how to externalize put it out there you know so they you're just weirdos after that, you know. That's true. I just... Uh, one thing I will say, I'm still salty and bitter as fuck. That me and Angel did not win uh, Best High School Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Who won it? Did I... Are they friends I today? Know, I don't even think I was there for that day. Oh, all I gotta say is the two who won it weren't even friends that you got from high school. Right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, it all comes to life, bro. It's crazy as fuck. So, me and Angel know each other since first grade. I think it was fucking Robert. I remember, I think, I think my high school quote was... You need to share one brothers for life. That's for you. Hey, bro. <laughs> I was I was bro. No, but for real, but like when you get when you hear like the shit that Oscar got to hear that we didn't get to hear. Yeah. Like them saying stuff about like the soccer boys, like we're tired of hearing about them. Like bro, that in what way like, were they tired of hearing about you guys? Just flat out, straight like that. Like yeah. cause we hadn't won like a championship in years. In years. years. I'm talking about like forty plus years. It was crazy. It was ridiculous. 